Hi guys, my name is Jay and today I'll be showing you how I made a little custom sensor panel using the free tool Rain Meter. Now, I was inspired to do this after watching Jay's Two Cents video on every PC should have a custom sensor panel. Uh, I will link the video in the description because I do recommend you watch that one first because it adds a bit of context as to why I did mine in rain meter rather than Ada 64. Um, so just to summarize that, uh, Ada 64 is a uh, hardware monitoring tool. Um, the only problem is it's not cheap. It's about 40, I think it's 40 US dollars for a license. You can get a 30 day free trial, but after that, it's just you have to pay for a license for it which in this application um, where I'm just literally just doing little widgets to display hardware information I don't think that's really that really justifies the cost of Ada 64 so that's why I went with rain meter instead because rain meter is a free tool to download it just runs in the background on your desktop and there are loads and loads of free skins out there that can be customized to your build you can customize them yourself as well for free and it comes with a lot of great third-party plugins for additional sensor information which I will get on to later so to start off with, you're going to need to know what case you're currently working with. Um, my case is the Fantex Enthu Pro 2. So with this case, I have two potential mounts that I can see off the bat. Um, so where it says the second ITX system, if you look on the case diagram, without the ITX system installed, there are two screw points right at the top there uh, potentially depending on the dimensions of the uh, LCD monitor that you buy these could be potentially very good mounting points for the screen cable management might be a bit difficult as well uh, though but if, um, if you're okay with cables just sticking out the top here and block in some of the RGB uh, strips then go for it but the mounting point that I went with is the SSD storage area so if you can see by the zoomed in pictures on the right hand side here you've got four SSDs with the cables nicely tucked away around the front of the case now those cables go all the way around the back panel of the mother the um, back of the motherboard tray and plug directly into the motherboard whereas I um, I did a sort of similar thing with my mounting points so I got the cables to go around the back of the motherboard tray and if you notice on the second power supply photo on the left there's a little hole above where they've got the um, the primary power supply just on the left now I managed to thread the HDMI and the USB power through that little gap so that I could actually power the monitor and get video output to it so that's how I decided my mounting points <clears throat> now the second step obviously is you're going to need a monitor or a little LCD screen to actually display whatever system information you want to display so for that I went to Amazon and got this little 5 inch HDMI display here for Raspberry Pi now the resolution says 800 by 480 but when you plug it into a PC it seems to change the resolution to 800 by 600 that was one thing that I didn't realize when actually buying this product but as you can see it's it's kind of cheap for a little screen I suppose but 
the main reason I bought this was because of the mounting points here. So you've got four little points that either end. <clears throat> Let me try that again. You've got four mounting points in either in all the corners of the um, PCB here, which is what I think might match up to the hard, to the uh, points where it says hard drive storage. Now I haven't actually tried that so don't take my word for it, you're going to have to try and do the dimensions yourselves when you actually get the monitor, if you're going to get the monitor for this case specifically. But another possible way of um, mounting this would be to mount it on the front of the case if you've got like little 3.5 inch uh, drive bays or whatnot, just so that um, just so that it's front facing and it looks nice but th there's a lot of examples of other people doing sensor panels like that that um, you could probably gain inspiration from I do recommend just looking around before you do anything just to see what looks good in your case specifically so yeah this is the monitor that I have currently installed in my PC um, I did have to buy these left angle HDMI leads just because it meant that um, cable management was just a lot neater because the um, just having straight up HDMI leads would just be a pain to try and actually bend to the point that I could actually thread it through the back of the uh, motherboard tray. So that's what I managed to do with my little cable management. Now that's more or less going to be the mounting options uh, that I am going to show because this is very specific to just my build obviously because I built it for myself. <clears throat> Anyone else with this case could probably do the exact same now I sort of got the dimensions wrong I must say for this monitor and the mounting points for the SSD storage and I sort of ended up having to use zip ties to just uh, basically tie it to one of these little side panels here um, it's not the neatest option in light, but because it's in a dark area of the case, it's not really too bad. I'll um, I'll show some images at the end of what it actually looks like when the build come together. But for now, that's uh, that's just a disclaimer of what I've sort of done. So now on to the downloads. First of all, you're going to have to download Rain Meter, obviously. I downloaded the final release version since that's the most up to date, stable version, as currently 4.4 is in beta. When that goes to final release, obviously, I'll update it to 4.4 final release. Um, the reason I did the final release is because I don't know whether or not there's going to be any updates in the beta that could potentially break or um, yeah that could potentially break the current version that I'm running. So first things first you're going to want to download Rain Meter uh, once that's done and installed and you've done all of that the Rain Meter pop-up should just pop straight up to your desktop so if I just go to that um, <coughs> so you'll see a little widget pop up with the default uh, display, so that would be the Illustro display here. Normally it would just show you your clock, the disk usage, um, I believe it was two disks that it showed on mine. I've chained, I've edited mine just when I was playing around with it just to display three disks rather than two disks but normally you just see the C drive and the D drive. Um, <clears throat> apart from that you'd also get this little welcome image pop up here to just remove them just click 
just right click each of the widgets and just do unload skin and they'll just disappear off into the background and not use any uh, resources or any um, real estate on your screen so yeah that's basically what will pop up when you download rain meter um, obviously to get to this manage rain meter skin just go to the system tray right click the rain meter icon and go to manage now you'll see I've got three skins here this center panel is this skin here Illustro obviously is the default skin that comes with rain meter when you install it and the HW info skin <coughs> that is the next download you're going to need so first of all you're going to need the hardware info utility you can download it from FOSS hub here with HW info as the um, as the page now what this basically does is it gives you access to a load of different hardware sensors that um, allow you to basically access through a rain meter plugin to display any like information so like um, for example I've used the hardware info plugin to do the disk usage section here and my uh, system temps I think I used it for as well as well as GPU usage and my network traffic I also used for it so that's another thing you're going to need to download is hardware info now there is some setup you need to do for this so when you install hardware info and click run you'll get a menu with well you get a uh, little pop-up with two options one of the options is to run and the other option is the settings now you're going to want to go into settings first so this is the screen that would pop up when you go into settings and you're going to want to set all of these here settings to be exactly the same as my settings because you need the sensors to show on startup otherwise the uh, the skins just not going to get any information from any of the sensors you're going to want to minimize them as well because you don't want the uh, hardware info widget coming up you just want to use the sensors through rain meter and obviously minimize everything else also star needs to be on shared memory support does need to be on as well because that's how it um, shares the information between the hardware info utility and the actual plugin itself through rain meter so that is what you are going to need as your settings and then you're just going to need to click run once you've done all of that and eventually it will just pop up in the system tray here and it will just run in the background simple easy to do and that's basically it for that now the third thing you're going to want to install is this here rain meter plugin for hardware info <coughs> so this will just download the hw info skin that you saw here and it will also give you the uh, if i just open the folder here go into resources it'll also give you the redistributable plugin in case you wanted to make your own skins and you wanted to bundle it all together into one skin now there's an important tool inside this as well called the shared memory viewer that is what is used to find all of the information that you need to add to your rain meter skins okay now that is enough of that let's get on to actually creating a rain meter skin shall we so first thing you're going to want to do is get to your rain meter skins folder which you can do by going to documents rain meter and then skins and as you can see here you've got the skins that are displayed in the manage rain meter section obviously you can just right click and open folder directly if you want and then just go back to the skins folder 
Um, so yeah, that, that's how you do that. Now to create a skin, what you're going to want to do is go into this folder here, create new folder. Uh, I'll just call it example sensor panel. So that is what I have called my new skin. If I just refresh that, there's obviously not going to be anything in here because it's an empty folder at the moment. So what you're going to want to do is first off create a new folder called at resources. That is what you're going to use to add all of your plugins, your uh, background images, stuff like that. So if I go back to the sensor panel, get those two, and then go back to my example sensor panel, go into the resources for that, and then just copy and paste those into there. So that's basically just using the same background image as the sensor panel that I've got up here, which is the one that's currently in use on my uh, little display in my case. Uh, the redistributable plugin can be copied across straight from the hardware info as well. Uh, that's just to make sure that the skin itself does come with the hardware info plugin. If you wanted to like post your personal skin anywhere else, like on DeviantArt for example, you can then just package it all up together using the redistributable and that all come with the skin that anyone downloads. So next thing you're going to need is an ini file, which is what is used to actually get the um, hardware information and display it. So if I just create new uh, text file, well actually if I go into Notepad++ real quick, so that's my current file for my rain meter skin. Obviously yours doesn't have to be as intense. I've just got mine because this is what I want to actually read. So if you just click new, file, save as. Uh, now you're going to the example sensor panel folder, save as type. Uh, you can save as type all types and then just do example dot ini. Now it's very important that it's an ini file because otherwise it's not going to read it at all. So save that. Example dot ini has been created in the folder. Now if I click refresh all, you'll see that it's popped up because it's found the ini file. Obviously at the moment it's empty, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just copy and paste these sections here over just so that I've got the same well I, I copied across the same background image and everything like that anyway so that's not really going to change um, I can change the information just change it to example example sensor panel this metadata doesn't actually do anything to the program itself it just adds generic information about what's been written so obviously it's got my author's name uh, obviously I've got the name of what I've called this and it just a brief description in the information section as well as a version number that can change if you want it to. I don't see me changing the version number anytime soon. Uh, pardon me. But yeah, that's that. Uh, so now an important section to also create if you want to. This isn't a uh, this isn't a necessary step, but it is a it just saves time that uh, it just saves time and effort so if you're going to use like for example the same font just through every 
meter you've got you'll create a variable section uh, ah. yep so if I wanted to use the same font over every single uh, text every single bit of text I'd use font name here uh, and just yeah I, I just add font name to wherever I need the uh, text to go rather than just add trebuchet MS just all the time everywhere it's just easier rather than having to type out all of this you just use it the once and it, it just makes changing things a lot nicer as well because everything's consistent so that's what I've currently got in my sensor panel any again uh, I am going to be referring back to it quite a lot because there's a lot of information that I might want to carry across so if I just open up my example and then just load this okay so at the moment I don't have any meters so it's not going to actually like me doing anything with it so if I just do a quick uh, measures if I do measure I'll just copy measure CPU for example so measures are basically what you use to get the values you want to actually display so in this case it's getting the processor information now if I just refer back to this you've also got styles here which are quite important to carry across let's take style left text for example this just keeps consistency obviously with styles and now if I just actually get to the meter itself meter labels CPU so that's just text there and now if I add meter value CPU this is what actually gets the value from the measure and displays it uh, so you'll notice here it's got right text rather than left text so I am going to have to go back to here and grab the right text style that I've currently got because I want to use the same styles across these examples to be honest just because it's easier so you'll see here it's using the color text font name and text size variables so at the moment I've only got the font name variable so if I go to color text and text size up in variables color text and text size are there color text text size there okay so that is done now text size color text font name just making sure that all my variables are actually there because otherwise it's just not going to display right okay so if we go down to the meter value here you notice that this here meter label CPU is a bit different from what you've got the value CPU so the difference is you've got a new property here called measure name and you've got percent one percent here as the text so measure name just takes whatever measure CPU returns and text percent one that will just display whatever measure CPU has as its current value percent is just a well, it's just a character added on at the end uh, just to display the right um, unit of measurement really 
So I can show you another example in one of my other meters in the sensor panel. So if I go to the meter disk usage or disk write activity even. So that is displaying whatever I'm reading here in measure disk 3 write with MBS, MB slash S appended to the end of the string. So that would be uh, N drive slash write and that's the current value it's pulling back at the moment with MB slash S. Obviously it's quite active at the moment because I am recording my screen so it's just recording it directly to the hard drive. Now that is that. So if I go back to here, click save and I try and load it again. This time it's actually loaded with my CPU usage. Now there's a lot of customization you can do with rain meter other than CPU usage obviously. Um, that would be it's a lot easier to use the hardware info plugin for any like detailed information you need like the GPU usage for example I've used the hardware info plugin here to uh, measure GPU usage uh, minimum value 0 max value 100 because it's a percentage value obviously you're not going to get 110 percent GPU usage because that's impossible now it looks a bit daunting for this but it's not actually that difficult um, so if you go into the hardware info skin resources you'll notice you've got the shared memory viewer here open it up and it will show you all of this information so this is what I've currently got plugged in as hardware in my system now to measure GPU usage obviously you just go to GPU here and you've got all of these little sensors that you can use to pull back information from now I have got I believe uh, is it GPU memory usage or 3 is it D3D usage uh, let me just double check yeah it's D3D usage so this is like um, direct 3D usage so anytime the GPUs in a uh, 3D application it would show the usage because of that uh, obviously you've got your units here as percentage type as usage and you've got a bunch of information here that probably doesn't really make sense to you at the moment but I'll get there. Um, so the important thing is you've got four properties you need to do when using the hardware info plugin. You've got the sensor ID, the sensor instance, the entry ID and the info type. Now these IDs are going to be different depending on your system. So it's very important you go in and if you download any skins using the hardware info plugin to make sure that they match up with what you've currently got. If they don't, obviously change them so that they do and then they will then begin to work. So if you look here you've got the hardware info sensor ID that is taking this ID here from the sensor details. You just copy that and you paste it into here as the value. Sensor instance, do the same. Entry ID, you've got your entry details here in this box. So take the ID, copy it, paste it, and job done. Now you've got the info type here, current value it's currently set to. So that would take this current value here and then post, post it to the uh, skin. And that's really all you need. Um, any customization can just be done like that. It's fairly straightforward and I think it looks good depending on whether or not you've got custom fonts as well. It, it would just go off the system fonts that you've got so if you can find a decent 
custom font yourself feel free to download them and use them obviously remember to change the font name to whatever the font name is you've downloaded um, apart from that I don't know whether or not there's anything else I can go over uh, let me know in the comments below if you want any more information I'm always free to uh, explain what I've currently got and try and help out I suppose um, so yeah that's that obviously once you're done with um, your skin you just take it once you plug your monitor in drag it over to wherever your monitor is and it will just display on there uh, one important thing you might also have to do is um, obviously you'll need to change the taskbar settings because you're using two monitors now obviously and you'll want to set multiple displays to off because you don't want to show your taskbar on multiple displays you just want to show it on your primary display and you don't want it getting in the way of your nice new sensor panel so let me know how uh, how you guys get on whether or not this has helped you out and um, so yeah see you in the next one